All right, welcome everybody. I call the meeting for the May 23rd regular Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors meeting to order. And if you would all join me. Being Memorial Day, I would love the opportunity to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Very important day on Monday. All right. Um, as important, we started, for those that might not have been here last month, we started a very important component of our um, monthly agenda to recognize the fallen firefighters for this last month. And if you all would stand with me as our PIO, Ms. Urban, reads the names of those fallen firefighters. Since last month's board meeting, we have learned of the loss of 10 more of our brothers. Neil Yuri, 68, of occupational cancer, from Lee Summit, Missouri. Steve Silverstritch, 51, of a medical emergency from San Francisco, California. Leland Alexander, 78, from a motor vehicle accident, Milledgeville, Tennessee. Joseph Bogdansky, 53, of a medical emergency from Waterbury, Connecticut. Gregory A. Jones, 63, of occupational cancer from Cumberland, Rhode Island. Derek L. Nestor, 43, heart attack, Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Mark R. Day, 60, medical emergency from Moncton, New Brunswick. Eric Beimer, 53, of occupational cancer from Kansas City, Kansas. Douglas W. Cook, 73, of occupational cancer, Toronto, Ontario. And Jared Neal, 42 years old, suicide, from post-traumatic stress-related illness, Canton, Ohio. Please remain a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, we'll have a roll, roll call of board members. I see everyone, uh, and I see Ms. Dom. Um, Director Devaney is suffering from some knee issues and is going to be, I guess, looks like laying supine with ice on your knee as you're watching Zoom upside down. <laughs> That's good. All right, well, I hope you feel better. Uh, would you just give us a verbal acknowledgement, Dom, you're, you are muted, if you would just give us a verbal acknowledgement to everybody that you're here. I am here. Okay, thank you. All right, everybody get a chance to look at the agenda, please. If you haven't, I'll give you just a quick moment to see if there's any additions or deletions to the agenda. Any additions? Deletions? Last time. Additions or deletions to the May 23rd, 2024 regular meeting minute agenda. Hearing none, I'll call a question. I'll entertain a question? No questions, no. Okay. All right. Your motion then? Motion to approve the agenda as stated. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Agenda is accepted or approved as, as presented. All right. For everybody that's here and everybody on Zoom, the board met in executive session to create a new and efficient public comment period. This new public comment period, after, after the board was out of executive session, a motion was made to incorporate this new public comment policy at all 
all of our board meetings from here on. That uh, motion carried unanimous, unanimously from the board members. And as we get, if you haven't, if you wish to speak, I'm sure you've had a chance to look at the new policy. If you haven't, I think it would be important for us just to ensure that everybody understands what the new policies are, and these policies will be enforced. The first item is that speakers will be asked to sign in before the meeting to acknowledge the rules and provide their name, the topic about which they seek to address the board, and to confirm whether they are a resident of the Oak Creek Fire Protection District or not. Number two. The purpose of the public comment period is to provide input to the board on issues relevant to the district and about which the board has authority. Number three, public comment shall be limited to three minutes directed to the board as a whole, not to individual board members. It shall be presented in a courteous and professional demeanor and not threatening, profane, vulgar, insulting, or in an abusive manner. It shall also be limited to topics pertaining to the district about which the board has the authority to act on. Number four, speakers, when recognized by the board chair, may be asked to provide their name and to confirm whether they are a resident of the district or not prior to addressing the board. Number five, individuals who engage in repetitive comments, questions, or who otherwise violate the provisions of rule and th uh, two and three above, rules two and three above, will be asked to refrain and to yield to the floor. Number six, failure to abide by these requirements after the first warning may result in the board requiring that the speaker in lieu of speaking, submit his or her statements in writing during future public comment periods. Number seven, neither the board nor the administration shall engage in discussion or provide immediate response to anybody who is speaking during public comment. Rather, the board is to benefit from hearing the input and determine what follow-up action is required, if any. Number eight, the board chair is responsible for the administration and enforcement of these rules. And number nine, if a member of the public continues to disrupt the meeting or engage in threatening or violent behavior, law enforcement will be called. Board members, do you wish to comment on the new policy? Dom? No, sir, I have no comment. All right. With that in mind, with the new rules and procedures for public comment, we will begin our first public comment period. Sky, do you mind? Sorry. As you can see, we have limited the public comment for those that signed up to one public comment period. Three minutes. And... For each member, no more than 10 members, limiting the public comment period to 30 minutes to make this board meeting more efficient and to reduce some of the issues that we have seen in the past where it almost became um, inefficient for us to uh, continue the board meeting. And in the future, we will request that members who sign up for public comment sign up in order. We will not allow for people to jump from one point of uh, to try to strategically place their name in a position where they will get either first comment, last comment, middle comment, whatever it might be. And I think Chuck, Melissa, Sharon, am I missing anything that was relevant to the policy? Thank you, Covered. Dom, did I miss anything? No, sir. Uh, and then, Mr. Camille, was there anything that you remember we discussed that I, I need to ensure that it's out? Okay, perfect. All right, our first comment period 
our first public comment is by Mr. Whitehead. Mr. Whitehead, if you would. As usual, we're still going to have people place themselves in the center of the room so that our our device will be able to not only record visually but also audibly, which is important. And I will start the three minute period when you are ready, sir. May I approach the bench to hand out my statement? <laughs> yes. so, this is not a court of law. <laughs> Okay, talk for me tonight is the Elk Creek Yellow Shirts, a proposed new type of volunteers within the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. Elk Creek Fire needs an entirely new category of firefighters, which I call the Elk Creek Yellow Shirts, to knock down spot fires with less than an acre in size. Otherwise, if windy fires will become very difficult or impossible to stop and make grow into very large fires. In firefighting lingo, this would be a type two slash initial attack team, sort of a hand crew, and they use primarily chainsaws, Pulaski's, and shovels to dig mineral earth lines. Men and women 17 to 45 in excellent physical condition will complete a 32 hour course for a red card, two full weekends with training provided by Elk Creek Fire, and I set 17 as the earliest age to join. If one parent assigned, uh, you can join the Marines for four years, then certainly you could join the Elk Creek uh, Yellow Shirts. Full strength would be 100 persons. Each Yellow Shirt would get a complete Nomex outfit to be kept in their vehicle. If a two-car situation is present, they would be issued two complete outfits, one for each car. That way, if they're out and about, they can always drive straight to an assembly point. Hopefully a spot fire can be swarmed in the first 15 to 30 minutes with as many as 50 to show up in the first hour. Secondarily, the yellow shirts would be called upon uh, to structure fires where there's a possibility of spread until the adjacent uh, forest is present. They could be used for traffic control around large incidents. To the naysayers, we cannot get anyone to volunteer. These persons would probably not want to be heavily involved in, quote, firehouse culture. They will love the outdoors, hard physical exertion, such as sports as mountain biking, snowboarding, trail running. Also, to live what I call a life of danger. They would be much respected in the mountain community, and this would be an important addition, a unique addition to the uh, volunteer structure of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> Paul Olson and my business is resides in Bell Creek. Um, I want to talk about transparency for a minute. But first of all, I'd like to commend you on the document you just read to us on public comment. I think it's well crafted, and it would have been nice to have had it a couple of years ago to have handed up what we just saw. But that's water under the bridge. But I welcome what you did, and I'm looking forward to it uh, moving forward. Now, on transparency, uh, last month I talked about I'd like to see the financial report that's given each month on the website so we can see kind of where that's going. And to, to separate out these other projects and consultant contracts that Chief Ware is doing so that we can track where that spending's going. The last one is on the um, study that just got completed about the, the um, now the name escapes me, the impact fee. And my experience with impact fees in highways, projects, 
and those sorts of things is that it really doesn't help the agency because the upfront equipment costs that it will fund are minuscule compared to the ongoing operating cost. And we see Director Woods talk about um, employee costs are the biggest cost to the district, and that wouldn't help that situation at all. I'm done. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Olson. And that leads us to uh, Mr. Coach Koch. Sorry, I said it wrong every time. It, it, it's all right, sir. Can, can you can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, did you guys think on the back side, right? No, it's especially. I'm afraid I can't do a video from where I am. I just don't have the bandwidth. Uh, you may begin. Sorry, you Flip, I muted the wrong person. A a am, am I uh, audible again? Yes, sir. Okay, so first of all, I, I want to say that I sincerely appreciate the work of this board at least most of its members, and I regret that I could not attend last month's gathering, but I reviewed the recording of it on the not-so-secret public space on YouTube that Sharon Trilk has kindly provided, together with her doing the recordings of these sessions, free and in the general public interest. Last month, about that recording, I must express my deep concern with respect to some process matters, in particular, the late addition of an item by one board of directors member and his insistence that his contribution be read aloud. You did not need to acquiesce to this request, and in my opinion, ought not to have done so. Your body is governed by applicable law, by your own bylaws, and by Robert's rules of order, and in that order of descending priority. None of these permit so late an addition of an agenda item, nor the tantrum that I saw and that you permitted. That item should have been tabled Mr. until this very meeting, and not allowed to be written Mr. until that time. Sir, in light of the new policy, I would wish that you refrain from singling out an individual board member and address the board as a whole. I am, sir. I'm not mentioning any names. But I appreciate your, your concern. I will attempt to do what you're, you're requesting. I, I've been told by some that you're lack, you lack power to do much about this, and I must disagree. You have the necessary authority, but have been hesitant to use it. Don't hesitate. If you find that some element permitted by law is somehow lacking within your bylaws, then rewrite them. And if you need help with this, I'm volunteering. Secondly, with respect to consolidation costs, which were the focus of that discussion, uh, I may surprise everyone here, but I'm going to agree with the one person I'm not supposed to mention by name. The cost of previous consolidation efforts should indeed be clearly shown to the voting public. I will also assert that you were wise not to publish the document that was provided that allegedly does this. Uh, I'm afraid that is an example of creative accounting that in the private sector would fail audit and get its creator sanctioned, fined, fired, or jailed. My numbers are unofficial, but my total using exactly the same data for the essential question, which ought to be what did Elk Creek spend on the consolidation effort, is a much more reasonable number, under $60,000. The total number provided for all fire protection districts is off by about a factor of two. And that's all I care to offer this evening, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Koch. All right, we have nobody else listed on public comment, and that will move us into our uh, review of the regular board meetings from April 2024. Have you all had a chance to look at the regular board meeting minutes? Yes. Any additions, deletions, or corrections to the board meeting minutes from April 2024? Additions, deletions, or corrections? Last time, additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from April 2024. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, that leads us into financial matters. Okay, <clears throat> this next slide is from May 23rd, 2004. These are the financial statistics 
for <coughs> excuse me, April 2024. The report was generated, let's say, around the 10th of May. So it should have picked up close to 100% of the April costs and revenues. Okay, first slide is overall revenue. Um, forecast for overall revenue for 2024 is 7 million. 001515. The actual year to date, year to date, total revenue for April is <coughs> excuse me, 208818. Contributions would include property taxes at about almost two million. And we'll have another slide on property taxes. Um, one of the things to note is that Elk Creek will be receiving what's called a backfill based on the legislation that was passed earlier this year. Ownership taxes are included in this. Interest income, again, is still noteworthy, about 110000 because interest rates are still, as everyone knows, pretty high. Lease revenue, 37000 Ambulance transport is $109,000. Grants are at thirty-one k. There's no duration grant. This is the same as last month because we finished the project. Um, one of the new items to revenue is reimbursement for shared services from um, Inner Canyon Fire Protection District, and that was 62000 The CERF reimbursement amount for year to date is really 2023 fires, so we don't have any statistics for 2024 fires. Next slide. April year to date expenses were one million seven seventy three sixty four. We're about thirty three percent through the year. Some detail regarding these expenses: admin, wildland suppression, maintenance, fire stations, and capital are all falling well under the thirty three percent. Departments that are showing is over thirty three percent for this year are fire, training, prevention, and EMS, which is pretty understandable. One of the things to note is that. These expenses are not net of Inner Canyon contributions because those are in the revenue line as opposed to the expense line like they were last year. In 2023, that's how we did it. 2024, we changed that. Next slide. Sharon, sure, is that just double check? Is that the correct slide? Uh huh. Okay. That's the next slide. Very good. Thank you. Year to date at income forecast was for the year is six hundred thirty thousand nine eleven. Um, last year net income was like six hundred forty four thousand. So we are projecting net income for twenty twenty four to be pretty much flat to where it was in twenty twenty three. Um, year to date at income for April was seven thirty seven seven fifty four versus a forecast of one million three eighty seven five forty. Again, short, primarily because of the backfill. That backfill was received in May, so when I report May financials, that backfill will be included in the year-to-date number. Next slide. Year-to-date property tax revenue budget is four million five thirty-five three sixty-five. As we saw on the previous slide, or we talked about. Um, Property tax revenue was about a million nine eighty nine versus a forecast of two million four sixty eight. Again, the backfill is affecting the year to date revenue, and that will be part of what is shown in May. Uh, next slide. Okay, the next slide shows labor. Just like revenue, labor is the biggest part of our expense budget. It's about 61% of the total expense number. The annual forecast for this labor number is 2,935,946. This excludes the SERF revenue, which is the out of district, I'm sorry, SERF expenses, which is the out of district expense. Um, the budget was forecasted in part based on 2023. Again, in 2023, the income received from Inner Canyon to reimburse us for shared services was included in the expense line. And kind of trying to adhere to GAP, we moved that to the revenue line 
Therefore, the expense budget is something, the labor budget is something that we're going to be looking at for the rest of the year. Um, in addition, there's a couple things that are of noteworthy. Is there are two individuals working in the fire district whose entire salary, wage, whatever you want to call it, benefits the whole nine yards will be reimbursed by grants. And again, those will be shown, they've been approved for the grants. We haven't received the money at this point. So that, again, will be shown in revenue, not in expense. So labor is one of the things we'll be looking at as we progress through 2024. Next slide. Surf labor. Um, the budget for year to date right now is um, 17,000. That's what was expected. The actual year to date was 17,490. So very close to what the budget was expected. Total budget for the year for our surf expenses. 926204. There have been some fires in April, but we haven't completed the paperwork, so therefore I don't have any details on those fires. They'll be picked up in May. Next slide. So at this point, we don't have surf reimbursement. We just have surf expenses of 25,000 and some change. We will, as soon as we have completed the paperwork, build the state and receive money from the state there will actually be additional information on the slide, but right now all we have are the surf expenses for the other district fires or prescribed fires in some cases. Next slide. As of April 30th, 2024, actual monthly expense recorded in the financial ledger was 541,689. This is amount shown in your board packet. So I'm making a motion to approve the expenses for April of 541689 Is there a second to Director Wood's motion? Second. All, um, any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion? Don, do you have any questions related to the expense presentation? No. Perfect. No, thank you. Okay, now I call the question. All in favor, uh, could you go back one Sorry. slide, please? All in, all in favor of approving the motion to approve the SAGE financial ledger expenses recorded for April 2024 of $541,689. Raise your hand. Are you in the affirmative? Affirmative. Dom, are you in the affirmative? Approval? Affirmative. Okay. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Labor in favor. Labor in favor. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then that leads us to the Chief's report. All right. <clears throat> Obviously, spring is starting to set up in the district. Uh, Elk Creek firefighters were extremely busy with several large-scale wind events that brought down power lines across the district. Members of the Wildland Division, as well as line staff, worked with Jefferson County <coughs> Road Bridge to help clear trees from roadways, as well as mitigate hazard trees after the events. Uh, it's one of the first times we were able to work with Road and Bridge, but they were overwhelmed, and so we were able to get some firefighters. They had great training out there and help those guys out to get the roads opened up sooner rather than later. Um, areas of the district were left without power uh, after damaged power lines. As the vegetation is green up, it's not a receptive fuel. Many of the down power lines did cause small, they caused small fires that were easily managed. Most of them were out on arrival. The volunteer and career staff did an excellent job of training, of training and responding to the calls during the weather events. We were able to bring in extra staffing on overtime as well. What we did do is we started triaging the events um, if there wasn't any immediate threat to lives or property and no active fire, we actually put that on the second tier and we'd get out to it when we could, trying to prioritize power lines in the road, etc. Uh, we have firefighters working with our federal partners on the Arapahoe Roosevelt National Forest on a prescribed fire near Nederland, Colorado. Work is a great training opportunity for our members as well as strengthens our working relationship with our local forest management. Uh, we've taken delivery of the Platte Canyon engine. We're getting the pump test done right now as well as some preventive maintenance and should be in service at Station 3 by the first week of June. We'll, we will be using uh, pump testing equipment at Platte Canyon this year for pump testing as well as uh, in conjunction with Evergreen, which should be more cost effective. Evergreen's raised their rates a bit this year. Uh, I also wanted to touch on the impact fee and next study. Um, did have a couple board members ask me about that. So uh, the impact fee next study was approved unanimously by the board 
Uh, in the September 14th meeting, the motion was put forth by Vice President Devaney and seconded by Secretary Baker. The motion was to gauge BBC Consulting to complete the Nexus study and not to exceed $25,000. Um, Jefferson County was not charged for the collection of fees. That was one big question everybody had. Uh, if anybody saw, um, SB 24, 194 was signed by the governor today. So that's going to change the process of the impact fees. Uh, before we talked about it, it was it would go through the county just like any other tax that was collected. Now I've been working with uh, Mr. Camille. Um, it's going to be a brave new world. Nobody really knows exactly how it's going to work, but. We're going to utilize that. It doesn't have to go through the county, so we don't have to deal with the Board of County Commissioners approving it, presenting, and they vote on whether or not we can do it. Don't really know what that's going to look like, but I'm working with Mr. Camille, and we should have a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like for next month's board meeting, and we'll present that for this body to decide if we're going to go ahead with that. Um, are yeah. there other departments that are going to be in a similar circumstance, similar situation like us? I would imagine so, we're not the only one. So we got very lucky. Uh, BBC Consulting, um, They, uh, I talked to our consultant who worked on a report with the revisions that Director Devaney wanted for the report. He actually couldn't get us a report. He has actually hired a number of people over the last couple weeks as soon as it went through the legislation that it was going to pass. Um, a lot of people are doing it. There's some counties that are that fire departments have never been able to institute impact fees, and so a lot of special districts are going to be working on that. Those nexus studies are all over the place now. Luckily, we have ours done. Um, so, I, yes. Short answer is yes. Everybody's doing it. I have a question for uh, Mr. Camille. Mm -hmm. um, since you probably read the legislation and, and are hip deep in, in, in it right now. Um, from it, it, at least from what you know now, is is there are, are there going to be required any rulemaking or additional enabling legislation back end or how does that look to you at this point? Um, no, so I mean kind of short answer to that is the thrust of um, SB 24, 194 was to make it easier, was to kind of cut out the second step of uh, primarily, I think it was going through the counties, because we have had historically, as Chief mentioned, there are a number of counties that basically always would say no. They just wouldn't entertain it, even if the district had gone through the process, gotten the next study, they would just not entertain the issue. Um, so primarily, the legal change is really that you don't have to go through the county for formal approval. There is still um, a 60-day notice period, so any municipality that you provide service within and any county that you have territory into the fire district, you do have to provide that notice to their board so they can kind of still so have... notice to the county itself. To the yeah. county itself. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there'll be a process in that way. It's just kind of switched to not actually have to go through and formally be approved. Historically, you actually negotiate an IGA right. with the county and they would actually collect the funds and then remit them. SB 94 kind of <laughs> steers that to basically provide notification and then it keeps the collection in-house at the So we would do the collection here? Yeah. You still have to have some degree of coordination with the developers and the county, you know, the, the ones issuing the actual building permits, right. but you can actually set it up in a way that the money would come direct to the district that wouldn't actually pass through the county. Um, there are some counties and some municipalities that have done that in the past. Basically, they just make the developer cut a different check <laughs> and then say, you have to mail that. You just have to you know, provide us proof that you've done it. So it has kind of a context. Here. But yeah, I mean, there isn't any more um, kind of substantive regulation or follow-up legislation that's anticipated. Really, the only thing is going to be kind of, I think, people are going to see how it works. <laughs> And what you know, how the process goes based on what's set up in the statute right now. So no, no, uh, nothing to go through the court or anything like no court hearing or anything anticipated. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Primarily at the board level, and then again at that kind of notice um, public hearing kind of level, uh -huh. staying at the district level. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, there, there's going to be some moving parts with it. We don't exactly know how it's going to pan out. Um, on, on the legal end, but I've been working with Mr. Camille, we should have a pretty good process. Hopefully my next meeting, it would be able to explain to you guys. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. <laughs> it's more than your wheelhouse. 
Yeah, I mean, ultimately it's kind of a timing question now because um, the even though it's been approved and now signed, there's a 90-day delay essentially, so that it doesn't become effective until early August. So that's when the law will actually be on the books. And so then you have to have this 60-day notice as part of the process. So you're kind of backing up the process based on when the law actually will be effective when you can get your notice out. So that's what we're trying to kind of thread that needle to not you know, delay it. But I, I still think, reasonably speaking, again, we're not sure how the county is going to respond. Um, you know, as far as the notice tomorrow goes, if they're going to attempt to, you know, object or kind of, you know, make it more difficult for the board to move forward. But ultimately, if things go smoothly, I still think it's reasonable to expect that in 2025, the district will be able to collect those impact fees on new projects. So I, I sent you a number of questions and also to the chief. Um, are you going to answer those questions next month or are you going to... I can address a lot of them. Okay. I was planning on doing that tonight. Okay. Tonight? Yeah. So oh, they, okay. they were the same as they were the same as Neil's questions, so I can address uh, them tonight. Yeah, many were. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you can do that, that'd yeah. be great. And I apologize. I don't know. I may have overlooked that, so I'm not sure that I'm aware of those. Yeah, well, I, I collated a bunch of questions that I had. Okay. Various scenarios about um, ADUs, uh, direction of AD had some issue. You know, mm. some questions about that. Okay. In uh, uh, one of my main. Uh, questions and chief will address it I'm sure is uh, can we be selective in different scenarios about uh, for example can we give uh, I, I don't want to say preferential treatment but can we differentiate between uh, construction types in for example if a home homeowner or a business goes all out and makes uh, makes a building that it uh, designs and builds a building, the construction practices that are uh, very fire resistant. Can we prefer that? You know, what are the legalities of doing that or we're not doing that? Is that permissible? As that far as, yeah, I can, as far as like offsetting. Offsetting, impact. so for example, um, if, if, if a construction were to use approved materials, mm -hmm. Uh, approved uh, 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 fire resistant con uh, construction practices mm -hmm. uh, is there a way that we can differentiate between uh, an impact fee uh, that we would assess uh, them versus someone who is on the other side of that uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. you know uh, fence so to speak yeah. um, and, and that would be tied to reality it, it wouldn't be just a preju prejudicial, prejudicial mm -hmm. issue. It would be uh, obviously something that's constru constructed to a high standard would be easier for us to defend. Yeah, and so that really gets down to the, the final impact fee schedule and kind of is a little bit of the, you know, one of those kind of final questions and something that may, we may want to discuss with the consultant as well. Um, kind of one of the the easiest examples that has been used that by various clients in the past is a set discount from impact fees if they voluntarily, for example, put a sprinkler system in. For so, example, you know, yes. like if you have a single family home, you know, and you put a sprinkler system in, you could have a discount right. on the impact fee. So you can certainly do that. We still recommend that it be part of the fee schedule. So it's, it wouldn't right. be subjective. Right. It would right. be of the, course. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of one of the baseline standards of the impact fees. You really just want to be applying the fee schedule, you know, so not making those subjective determinations. Exactly. But certainly, if you can address it in a way that um, typically, again, mitigates the risk that you're trying to, you know, address with the impact fee in the construction element, then yeah, you can have those as part of your ultimate fee schedule. Chief? Yeah. I can, I can yeah, address go ahead. all those questions. Yeah. Um, so running, I mean, we'll, we'll get into building construction. So the idea, the idea of impact fees is not just building construction. The idea is people living in the, right. you know, mm -hmm. if you build a new house and four people move in here, if you have four people, they're going to pay <coughs> from everything that all the existing people have paid for. Right. And so most of your hardened, most of the uh, home hardening, it's addressed in Appendix E of the building code. Right. So you have to have fire resistant construction. You have to already have that. I don't believe we should get in there and tinker with building codes. 
sprinklers. It's been part of the building code since 2005, I think. I don't know. JetCo admitted in 2011, we got it back in 2018. So it's not really an option. I mean, you have an option if you want to put a 30,000 gallon cistern in. You know, I, 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 I think the idea of building code, the, the impact fees are just people here, not just building. I mean, most of the building construction is addressed by, you know, if you're adding more people, that's going to create more of a burden for us. Um, the other component, I mean, and we can, and this is up to this body, if we want to get into that, but then, I'm, you know, you did talk about what uh, administrative burden is going to be. If we have to go out and start inspecting houses for our impact fees to see if you're going above and beyond whatever thing we're going to come up with, that is an added administrative burden. Straight across is the idea if you have a new home, if you're building a new home, there's a set impact fee and it's broken off by size. So 3,600 square feet is considered, below is one fee, 3,600 square feet, and one is considered big. That's set out in building codes and NFPA by, it's a breakover for different sprinkler systems. Um, for the administrative cost, there, there's not much. I mean, uh, so I, I spent a couple hours gathering data for the consultant, that was it. Um, and in legal time, I think I've probably spent maybe an hour with Mr. Camille going over it. Once we have a set, once we have the final report, he'll go over it and I want, him, I want his approval on the final report, but we haven't got to that point yet. Once the board approves it, then we'll send it to him for that component. Um, I don't have any square, I don't have any projections. The bike park is one. That, we don't know what it's going to look like, so again, as Mr. Camille's pointed out, any impact fee has to be defendable. It has to be based on codes and standards. Right now, we don't have anything with the bike park that we can apply to it. Once we have more, then we can look at that. Um, what else? Am I missing anything else? Um, FTE cost? Um, Administering the impact fees, I don't think it will be any more than any other fee we collect. We collect fees for all kinds of things. This is just going to be one more fee, uh, no more than inspections or anything else that we do with the fire marshal. Um, external costs, that's about it. Um, BBC Consulting, they have stuck with their bid for uh, 18000 They haven't. We haven't submitted any change orders, so they're actually going to come in exactly what they said they were going to do. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. Does that answer all your questions? Yeah. Um, yeah. Director Devaney, that touch on uh, everything you wanted me to talk about? Yes, sir. <coughs> Perfect. Um, again, we have a lot of things going on with this, and over the next month, once I get the final report back, I'll send it to you guys so you guys can review it. Then hopefully at the next board meeting, there are no more changes. We'll approve the report, then we'll take the next step for legal to review everything, and then we'll see I'm still shooting for January of 2025, but we can put this in place. Uh, operations, we had uh, volunteer firefighters had 402 hours of staffing, <coughs> average 3.4 members per call, 32% of our calls overlapped, and our average response time was 834. A lot of that reason was down is we had a lot of localized events um, via windstorms, any places that were impacted significantly, so crews were just bouncing from call to call. So you have to come back to station, so that's why we're a little below average. Uh, no fires. I did want to note, I'll talk about it next month, but over the last two, two and a half weeks, we have had two structure fires. Sea shift was on for both, and they did a great job and prevented catastrophic losses. Um, so thanks, Lieutenant Hartley and all those guys. They did a great job. Uh, mutual aid, we had mutual aid seven times. Transports, 30. So for 148 calls, we had 30 transports. We had 293 hours of training, um, all of our wildland, physical fitness, um, pack tests, and refreshers are done, so everybody's all ready to go. Fire prevention, uh, Fire Marshal Rush is participating in the International Fire and we Code hearings. Six inspections, 30 letters, county referrals, insurance requests. Insurance is a getting to be a very difficult landscape up here. Captain Yellen is working. Uh, we're doing what we can with insurance companies. Uh, some of the big problems are there's no standard. Every insurance company operates on its own standard, which consists of using Google Earth, um, bringing inspectors up here from Texas. We met a guy who took an eight hour course and he's up here now assessing homes for a certain insurance company. Um, never lived in the mountains, doesn't have any fire background, no nothing. He has an eight hour inspection course and that's what they're doing. We're trying to work at the state level with the 
insurance board trying we were pushing with a lot of other fire protection districts to try and standardize mitigation within the state at least on the insurance front um, not sure where that's going to go but there are a number of TBD things captain yellen is working pretty hard we're getting i'm guessing probably four emails a week maybe five about my insurance company just canceled me what do i do um, some of the hoa meetings we actually got to talk to a number of people that uh, can't sell their house because nobody can buy it because they can't get insurance. Um, uh, there were talks about ISO. Nobody's even using ISO. It's a very antiquated standard. Uh, everybody has their own set of questions that they ask, and none of them are the same. It's, it's really an interesting landscape, and we're doing everything we can with it, but there's, it's, it's a challenge. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, Fire Marshal Rush and Fire Marshal Ferry from Evergreen are working with Jefferson County on track comments for the new transportation design and construction manual. We still have our county challenges. Um, we'll probably have more of that next week to uh, update everybody on. Uh, the new motors arrived for the service truck and we should have that in service by the end of next week. Could I mention that we also have about two ambulance chassis? Yes, we did get the uh, ambulance chassis. Those are part of the new ambulances we ordered eight months ago, maybe more. We got the chassis. We still don't have a delivery date, rough delivery date. They're talking mid-25, maybe second or third quarter of 25. So what do you mean we have the chassis? We don't have the chassis. Oh. The vendor has the chassis. Obviously, we don't need chassis. The vendor has the chassis, and they're going to start building it. They're going to gonna start to building it. Well, they're worried the queue to be built. Yeah, right. So gotcha. it's it's one step closer. Okay. Whatever that means. I mean. <laughs> well, I wanted to say I appreciated Captain Weinfeld's um, letter describing the activities at the Bananas Fire. Thought, uh, that but was important. That last one was a good stop, for sure. Mm -hmm. the, um, and, um, and it helps the board stay grounded and understand exactly the efforts that our firefighters go through each day and especially in the sound like it was a pretty good fire in terms of a lot of activity was necessary to try to hold that in check and to save lives. It was it was a very big fire with very big holes in the floor which nobody fell through which is amazing. Um, yeah, everybody did a great job. No kudos to your personnel. And then I wanted just to recognize again as I did to you before the artistic flavor that Station 2 now has with their sign. I that is a, it really adds a great deal of class to those uh, young men and women that are working in our welfare well, module. And um, the, If you haven't seen it up on Mount Evans Boulevard, it is, it is beautiful. And it was one of our members that put the effort towards, is that correct? Yes, uh, the, the leader of the fuels crew, the fuels crew lead, is a very crafty individual and he was able to parlay, um, kind of pass the hat, and uh, there was no district money spent on it, but uh, we were able to pass the hat and his neighbor has some sort of CNC, I don't even know what it is, but yeah, through it was, some, uh, a favor and then he redid all that, it looks pretty cool. And it, it really represents, and I, I think that it gives that firehouse a little added, a little added presence. They take Where a lot of pride in the past. Time. We've had any. I've seen in my time here. I don't know how many iterations of signs on the outside. It, it, it's been pretty marginal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we had we still hide the porta potty, which is good. <laughs> good point. Um, any questions for the chief? Anything else? Tom. No, sir. Okay, thank you. That will lead us into old business. The first is just an update on the chief's <coughs> uh, The board was able to meet and have a discussion related to the process. We are still working with legal to bring that together for a final presentation of a package appropriate for the chief and for this, um, and for this board and for this community. Um, Again, I, uh, we're still kind of clarifying some of the things that we wanted to add to it, but that is a work in progress, and I anticipated, uh, I would like to think that we would have it in June. So, um, next is strategic planning. Chief, did you just want to bounce off that real quick? Yeah, um, we, uh, 
most of the focus groups are done. The consultant's trying to work on it. The last group is trying to get something with the board together. Uh, we're probably shooting for, we're going to kick the can down the road a little bit longer, probably to July, to have the final, uh, final report out. That's, that's kind of where it's at right now. The uh, consultant's trying to put everything together. Uh, he was saying we should have a rough draft by first week of June, see what it looks like. And then, uh, anything else? You, no. Any questions for the chief on the strategic plan? One thing I would say is uh, the board is working to try to get a in-person meeting with the strategic planner, the coordinator, the director of the program, in June. And um, looks like we might still have some Zoom needs. Might, yes. No. All right. Well, busy people with busy lives, trying to get back to the community, trying to piece together schedules. But we will get that to participate in this. This is a lofty goal, and I appreciate what you guys are doing. Because you're going to have a one-day, full, eight-hour um, session, correct, uh, as an organization? Uh, yes. Finally, incorporate the board's yeah. suggestions. Okay. Yeah. There, there's going to be it's going to be a lot. Yeah. All right. Um, and then our next last item in old business is the director report. Chuck, do you wish? Uh, well, the, o the only thing I would like to uh, say is that uh, I requested, uh, as I requested uh, last month, that we uh, we put my report on the website. So, so in there, public, I hear a motion. Well, uh, I don't think we have to have a motion. Uh, I think we can just uh, do it. I think that in light of what we're uh, trying to accomplish and to keep things in mind with the process. I would recommend a motion. Well, uh, then I make a motion that uh, we put my report on the website in uh, uh, some place that's easily accessible to the public. There's a motion made by Director Newby. Is there a second? A second for discussion. Okay. As maker of a motion, do you want to clarify anything further? No, nope, just that we put the report uh, on the website as our request. Okay. Are we open for discussion now? Yes, we are okay. open. So, this is your opinion. Okay, it is not. So, actual. first off, so uh, just I'm clarify. I'm going to vote against okay. putting it on the website. Don't be smiling at each other. Well, of course, you know. that, let's keep this profession. Well, there's I'm no need. Let's just keep it business. Let's keep it professional. I agree. First off, um, I'm not sure why. A report that you want to put on Elk Creek Fire Protection District website includes information on other fire districts because it's not appropriate. Work. Stop. I'm uh, uh, let, uh, I'll, yes. I'll handle this. It is a court law, but I do have a gavel, so let me. You finish I with the point. I still have the floor, Director Nimby, so oh, I would like to finish. Okay, Director Woods. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just saying. I have, I have the floor. Okay. So the only reason I can think why you include the other fire districts is just shock, I guess, because I'm going to remind you that the other two fire districts approved the consolidation. So obviously they spent the money and they approved the consolidation and they approved the minutes. Yes, it did. It's true. It's true. Absolutely, it's true. So therefore, any monies that were included in this report about the other two fire districts, it's moot because they improved the consolidation. Second, you were forced to submit 26 core requests. You probably could have walked in to see Barbara, and she might have provided the information, but the core requests were obviously something that you needed to do. What resources in terms of taxpayer dollars as well? Fire district member time at Elk Creek and Canyon North Fork FBDs devoted to the consolidation effort in 2021, 22, and 23. You must have heard that question, but I have not. So, uh, can you say that again? Just speak I up so not, I can hear what I you're saying. I have not heard that question. Heard what question? Or the question that you have about? in your report. 
What question? What resources, in terms of taxpayer dollars, you're saying that the community, members of the community, have posed this question? I've not heard that question. So apparently you have. I still think including the fire districts in this report is inappropriate. So if I'm looking at the cost of these things and I take out the other fire districts, then the Triton report costs us around 10000 and the board agreed and approved that expenditure. So therefore, it was a legitimate expenditure because the board approved it. They were asked and they approved it. So we take out all of the monies for all the other three fire districts, uh, consolidation. If I look at your, again, across three fire districts, you're on the board of Elk Creek Fire District, not the board of the other two districts that approved the consolidation. <coughs> and the residents then voted to approve the consolidation and the minutes. So including them in this report isn't appropriate. Your, your district, um, all of your, your tables and things, again, including all three fire districts is inappropriate. Triton contract, including the fire districts, and down to the consolidation effort did not cost $343,000 for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. Up, what, what, what are you saying? Uh, the just speak Elk up so Creek I can hear your Fire point. Protection District did not spend $343,000. Yes, but all, all three districts combined did spend that business. much. Point, point taken. Point, point taken. Point taken. Next point. Next point taken. I don't agree with your point because you were on the board for Elk Creek, not the board for Inner Canyon, not the board for North Fork. You did not vote in North Fork. Mr. Bozak, you really You did not vote in North Fork. You did not vote in Inner Canyon. Those two districts approved the consolidation. Therefore, including their numbers in this report is totally inappropriate. It's moot. It is not appropriate. Um, you refer to the consolidation efforts marketing campaign. It was an educational campaign. I went to the three fire districts meetings. It was educational. It was not a marketing campaign. Again, that is your opinion. It is not the district's opinion. So I keep taking numbers off. We didn't spend what you said. We have to take exception to uh, Director Woods. We real, did. We real, did. Real spend. quick, uh, Director Newman, uh, you'll get a chance well, after. Well, uh, you'll need, get a chance. I need let to answer finish. these points. No, sir. Uh, you do let her finish, Director Newman. All right. I gave you the opportunity last week. Last month, let her finish. Well, you didn't actually. So well, no, I did. And no, you, you got a chance to speak. You talked over me, and so did Director Woods. Shut the tape. Pardon so me. you, yeah, you did not me, allow me to speak. And you're not allowing me to speak. Is that no? Or you're going back, to speak. The revenge back or something? Don't know. I'm being professional about this, and I'm speaking my mind. Go ahead, about this. Director Woods, please. Let's, so if I take all of the numbers out. For um, you've got numbers in here for personnel that answered questions. Okay, a lot of those people are salaried, and therefore they do their regular jobs and they answer questions. It doesn't cost the district an additional amount. They do it on their own time. They're still required. I've been in a salaried position many times. I have to do my job plus whatever else I'm asked, and I get paid the same amount. I don't get charged, I don't charge a client an extra amount because I have to do something extra. I have to do my regular job plus the client's job. So I guess my point is I would not vote to put this on the website. It is not about Elk Creek. It's about three fire districts. It's your opinion. It's not fact. That's all I have. All right. And you will get a chance. Any other discussion on the motion? Last time. I have none. Okay. 
I will speak uh, against the motion. However, I see the merit in providing a cost to the taxpayers on consolidation. I don't approve of the report as written, but I see the merit of being transparent about those dollars. Last time. Discussion on the motion? Director Devaney, I heard you request to speak. No, sir. I was vocalizing that I have no comment. Okay. Chuck? Yeah, so uh, this is my report. Uh, I have a right to report to the constituency of the district, to the citizens of the district. And uh, I profoundly disagree with your characterization of my report. Uh, if you want to have a develop a report of your own and uh, speak against my report, you know, that's fine. But um, uh, I, I think that uh, it is appropriate that we address what the three fire districts spend because it, um, uh, go, it is germane because it goes to the point of uh, how we are uh, together uh, taxing and, and spending uh, the taxpayers' money and what we're doing with it. I think uh, that it's very appropriate that citizens of Elk Creek uh, understand what the other fire districts spent, what we spent, and uh, that they get a, a, a very big picture of what was spent in total. So your characterization that, that it was inappropriate for me to include those other numbers is just wrong. I disagree with it. And uh, furthermore, um, uh, I don't think I need this board's permission to have uh, this report put on our website. Uh, in our bylaws, uh, we, uh, we essentially uh, tell each and every director that our primary duty is to represent our constituents. Uh, our constituents ask us about how much we spent uh, during consolidation, um, and many of the questions that they ask me, uh, I answer in this report. It's my report. Uh, I don't represent that it represents the district, but it represents me as a director. And I have a right to speak to our constituents uh, through this report. And I don't believe that I need your permission to, ha to have uh, this report directed onto the website so that the public uh, has, can, can have access to it. It's me reporting to them. And if you do not, if we do not do that, if we do not put this report on our website where our citizens can access it, uh, then we are doing a disservice uh, to our citizens, to our taxpayers who pay our salaries. Anything else? Well, uh, yes, something else. Will we put this on the website or will we not? All the question. Point of clarification, Director Devaney. I call the question. Call the question. You want to read the motion, Secretary Baker? Uh, Director Chuck Newby made a motion to have the report that he had put together on consolidation put onto the website. It was seconded by Vice President Dominic Devaney. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Against? No. Aye. Aye. That motion does not carry. So that leads us to new business. Um, Chief, you want to address the sale of the fire engine? Yes. Um, <clears throat> we uh, have a 1998 Schmiel fire engine. Um, NFPA recommends fire engines should be removed from frontline status after 15 years. Then they can remain in service for five years in reserve. We have pushed our envelope with this truck quite some time. Our apparatus committee right now they're working on they're working on getting bids, so we'll actually be ordering new trucks. 
Uh, we have a loaner from Platt that we're going to be purchasing, uh, which should cover because unfortunately delivery times on engines are like everything else. Um, this engine from Platt is going to work just fine. Right now we have some dependability issues with that, uh, that Schmiel. We're not running it as a frontline engine anymore, and I would just like to sell it before we have some sort of catastrophic failure. And it may, it may not. It may run fine forever, or it may not run fine tomorrow. It's just it's not a reliable engine for what we need it for. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and surplus it, so we can free up the base space, and we no longer have to deal with it anymore. Again, it's 1998, which you know can be the math. Of 26 years is uh, much longer than uh, we should be keeping a piece of equipment. Okay. Um, I'm Director Pixley? Yes. I would like to make a motion to surplus the vehicle as stated by Chief Blair. Second. Second. Second the motion. Discussion on the motion? Discussion on the motion? Last time. Discussion on the motion? Secretary Baker, can you read back that motion? Are you ready? I'm actually just typing it. <laughs> okay. And it had to do with the 1998 Schmiel fire engine sending to surplus. Uh, Vice President Dominic Devaney made a motion to surplus the 1998 Schmiel uh, engine, and it was seconded by uh, Chairman. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? So, discussion. Uh, our discussion on the motion. Discussion. So what what do we mean by surplus? Uh, we sell it. We no longer have an earnings for it. So we just put it on the market. Uh, to a certain extent, we'll probably use. There are a couple brokers in the U.S. that are that you know obviously the used fire truck market is a kind of weird one. Uh, we don't put it on Craigslist or anything. <laughs> we'll go through. Well, the ambulance we did actually. Door. I think next door. I don't touch that. I don't touch that thing. I'm not. We're not dealing with that. Facebook. Um, I don't deal with that either. Uh, no, so there are a number of brokers within the U.S. that are well known for this, and they've got far reaches. Um, we've had great look in, luck in the past. It's just easier to do. they take a percentage and then yeah. they handle everything, so we don't have to deal with anything like so that. So it's just the whatever market, whatever they can get for it. Correct. Yeah, yeah, whatever the market will bear. We'll get eighty percent. They give you ten percent. Uh, it's something like that. I don't know what their margins are right now, but it's it's. It's well worth it. We've tried to sell things in house before, and it's just problematic. I mean, you have tire kickers, you have people that want to offer you nothing for it. Yeah. Um, the truck is not worth a whole bunch, um, but historically, Friendly Mountain is probably the broker we're going to use. They've done the best for us in the past, and other agencies have done the front range to use them. So, it'll probably be the go to with it. If I may make a comment, Director Pixley? Yes. Chief Ware, the organization that runs the skid truck for the CSD pool, mm -hmm. are you aware of that program? Yes, we've sent people through it. Yeah, they are looking for a fire truck. Ours is four-wheel drive, so with a solid front axle, it doesn't have the same handling characteristics that they're looking for. Um, uh, making it four-wheel drive is challenging. It's It's got a much smaller market. It also... I don't know if it would meet their criteria. I'll reach out if, if we could. That would be great. Um, I'd much rather donate it to the CS people, and maybe they would give us free usage of their program. We've sent people through the program. It's a great program. It's an amazing program. Yeah, he just mentioned it the other day when we were chatting. As he knows, he asked me if I knew of any fire trucks. If you could pass me his email, me? yeah. If you could email me, I will phone, absolutely. I'll reach out, and then I'll absolutely. If we end up donating, I'll make sure you guys are apprised of that. Again, it's not going to be something we're not going to get a hundred thousand dollars for this truck. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds if, like it's life and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, and if we could donate it, we utilize. So, what she's talking about the skid truck program. It's a driver training program through the CS people, and it puts people in larger vehicles. And they, it's a big, you know, fire engine. They've got water trucks, and they have outriggers on the side. And you learn how far they can go before they roll over. So you go into corners that. 35, 40 miles an hour in a pumper. Um, and it's, but it's, it's designed for driver training to see how far the trucks can go and then how far they shouldn't go and how to handle skids. And it's a, again, we put some people through it. It's, it's a great program. All right. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay. Question? You want to read the motion again? 
Vice President Dominic Devaney made a motion to surplus the 1998 steel engine seconded by Treasurer Sharon Wood. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion carries. There's no other business under new business. I will accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Aye. We'll call adjournment at 7.10 p.m.